My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking on the back of the other air versus water cooling video we did, we are doing oil cooling. So, this wasn't included in that video because oil cooling is a bit different. Um, oil cooling, weirdly enough, is actually quite effective, even though the specific heat capacity of oil is crap compared to water, um, oil cooling has a uh an advantage in a sense over cool over other cooling methods so generally let's just stick with water cooling you'll have a cylinder the head and then you'll have your cylinder like this and then you'll have we'll just go with a dry liner but you have water passages here and then in your head you also have a weird path of passages sometimes around there that goes around spark plugs stuff like that. depends on the head but you can see that um, this cooling effect only affects the head and the cylinder to a degree. Uh, when the cylinder cools down, heat from the uh, actual block will be uh, will transfer uh, from the rest of the engine. Sorry, the um, casement um, will transfer to the rest of the engine um, through the cylinder. God, get this out. Um, why do we want all our cooling up here? Well, of course we do because, you know, we have our port, our exhaust port and our combustion chamber. This is where the heat is generated in our combustion chamber and the heat, the waste heat is let out um, through our exhaust. So these are the hottest regions of your engine. Uh, one of the main reasons why exhaust pipes go uh, out the front of your engine directly into the airstream, help cool the exhaust. We'll go into exhaust cooling and how a design of an exhaust can actually help the cooling any road. The thing with oil cooling is when you have an oil cooled engine, um, it can get into the internals. So it actually cools the crankshaft. And uh, when you have little squirters and you spray the underside of your piston, it could absorb heat that way. Like I said, the transfer rate of oil isn't brilliant. This is why we don't really use oil cooling on really high performance bikes. Some bikes, if they have overheating issues, you can then add an oil cooler to help remove even more heat but um, oil coolers, uh, you know, you already have an oil circulation system, you have to have one of them, so adding a cooler into it is not a problem, really, apart, you know, there's the weight of it, but uh, your pumps already has to be there, so it's basically just your oil cooler radiator, basically, and, you know, these are um, oil-to-air systems where it's air that passes through and removes the heat. Um, you know, that, so in a sense, an oil cooler is actually quite cheap. With the SV1000 and the 650, you have a small radiator for water, and you have a small oil cooler um, radiator for oil. Um, so you can use a bit of both there. If you have an oil cooler and a radiator for water cooling, you'll notice that your radiator can actually be a lot smaller. Um, so in a sense, the way to look at it is, is that water cooling is cooling from the outside of the engine system, in a sense, the combustion chamber and your cylinder, where oil can actually get in there, not so much the combustion process. And this is why you find all oil coolers on engines that are one older, um, because they're not so much high power, because if you want high power, you require more heat. So if you want more power, you have to go hotter, in a sense. Uh, burn more fuel, will liberate more um, energy, you know, the stored chemical energy. And oil cooling is, you know, is a good way to go. Um, because of its simplicity, you know, its lack of complexity, stuff like that. Where the oil cooling is in the system can change. It can basically come off, um, it can go through your pump system, so your pump will pump uh, your oil through your filter and then through your oil cooler it can pump through your oil filter uh, cooler and then through your filter and then to your engine or it can pump um, the, 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 the weight the return side of the system if you do one or the other if it's the return then you have to have a pump specifically for the oil cooling if you have a pump then cooler and then into the main galleries and stuff then the, the the lines that you have for your oil system have to be oil pressure rated lines um, because basically you need to maintain the pressure um, so that the pump pressure will end up in your cam bearings 
and all the rest of it. So like I said, this is a bit of a different animal and there are one or two different arrangements and one or two different arrangements have been tried in the past. Like I say, when you go to higher power density engines, then oil cooling uh, just really isn't adequate and you use air cooling. It's all basically how you design the engine. Uh, cost effectiveness is one of them things as well. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.